Hey, can you please explain to me what Arminianism is? I was told that you could describe it in an easy way for me to understand. Sure, no problem. I'll do my best. I would appreciate it. I am required to take some religion classes in my continuing adult education and the subject of what Arminianism is, and my friend said you had a few conversations with her about it. Well, I can give you a church history view first, and then a general view how it relates overall. Sounds good. If I don't get something I'll just ask you to explain more. Back in the 1600s a man named Jacob Arminus emerged teaching a doctrine that opposed a current Protestant state church. The followers of Arminus thought the official confession of faith should be changed because it was too Calvinistic. Whoa, whoa, Calvinistic? What's that? Oh yeah. Calvinism was pretty much the opposite of Arminianism. It was doctrine that was favored by the reformers in the Reformation period. It stressed grace alone for salvation and the sovereignty of God in salvation. It was not new, but was just strongly emphasized more during this time in history. Okay, I understand. Go on. The followers of Arminus insisted that the optical confession of faith and creed in Holland be changed. The leadership of the state decided to let the two side debate the issues. Wow, I bet that was really intense. Yeah, it took about 10 months to deal with all the points. So, what were the main issues? Well, the Arminians seemed to be merely modifying a doctrine from centuries earlier called Pelagianism. Today, some people do call the Arminian doctrine semi-Pelagianism. You mean some of these things were already covered centuries earlier? Yeah, actually about a thousand years earlier. Anyway, the state ended up ruling in favor of the Calvinists and against the Arminians. Just because some state political leaders judged it to be wrong doesn't mean they were wrong. Isn't that right? Yeah, I agree. The standard of judgment is the word of God not some political panel. But, just so happens, that Arminianism is against God's word. So, what was wrong with it? Well, to start with they were wrong on the spiritual condition of men and the effect, or really lack of effect, of the sin nature. They pushed the idea that man, in his fallen sin nature, has a free will. So, what's wrong with that? Isn't that a basic truth that almost everybody believes? It may be popular and most people do believe it, but that does not make it right. Again, does it meet up to the standard of God's word? The Bible shows clearly that man, because of the fall of Adam, is spiritually dead and unable to understand spiritual things because of spiritual death. Wow, I have never heard anybody teach that, especially any preacher. Well, that does not surprise me the least bit. Most preachers are afraid to teach the Word of God on these issues, because they will lose most of their members, which means they lose money too. What other things were Arminians wrong? The doctrine of election. They claimed that God chose people to save before the world began, but where they were wrong was on what basis God chose them. They tell it that God looked down through the future to see what the choice of the sinner would be. They say God chose all those that he saw who choose him. What did a Calvinist side teach in this point? The other side taught that God was absolutely sovereign in election and chose certain ones unconditionally in Christ based on his own will and sovereign purpose. It does not leave any space for the sinner to take credit, whereas the Arminian view does. This is pretty interesting. It is weird that I have never been exposed to any of this in our church. Arminians then taught that Jesus Christ died for all people without exception, making all people potentially savable. They say he died, not just for the ones God chose, but even died for the ones that he did not choose. I see problems with this one already. Why would God make his son go through that suffering knowing many he already knew, would not believe, were going to hell? That does not seem fair to Christ, does it? The Arminian system actually makes Jesus out to be a miserable failure. They say he did all he could do, and now the rest is up to the sinner. I guess the other side said Christ only died for the ones God chose, is that right? Exactly right. The Word of God tells how the sin of God's people was imputed or legally transferred to the account of Christ. Jesus Christ was charged with their sins and had to pay for them and actually did this with his suffering and death. Did that secure their salvation? Absolutely. You are really getting this stuff. The next thing the Arminians were wrong on was on the conversion experience. They gave humans way too much ability, just like they did in the first doctrine we talked about. Did they put emphasis on the act of their will, and that it was free? They denied that God could irresistibly save the sinner, and they claimed that the sinner had to cooperate with the call of the Spirit for the Spirit to do his work. 
What does the Bible say? God's word says sinners are in need of a new birth because of their death and sin and their inability to understand and believe on their own. God comes by the power of his spirit using the gospel and brings the sinner to life supernaturally and effectually. Did the Armenian teach the need of the spirit for help, but that they had the final say? Right. The power and difference between heaven and hell the Armenian believes is in the hands of the sinner. So far, all this seems to be divided into clear and opposite categories real nice. Lastly, the Armenian said, once a person was saved, that they could lose it by sinning. I've heard that one before. I guess the Calvinist side said salvation could never be lost, once a person had been saved? Right, simply because salvation is by pure grace. They did not earn it, so they could not do anything to lose it. Saved by grace, and kept by grace. How does God's love play into all this? Arminians believe that God loves all people without exception, but ends up sending people to hell that he loves. Those who believe in sovereign grace or Calvinism, as it's nicknamed, believe the word of God that shows God, who exclusively loves the ones he chose. Is that basically all there is to it? Sounds like the Arminian doctrine involves man doing works, or fulfilling certain conditions to be saved, and the other side believes that God is doing all the saving without the help of man. Salvation is of the Lord, and is by free and sovereign grace. Man is unable to do anything for his salvation, and must be done by God alone to be grace. Otherwise it is by the works of man. So, what do you conclude Arminianism is? Arminianism is pure humanism. It is satanic, and of the spirit of anti-Christ. Arminianism is another gospel, a false gospel that features a false Christ. None other than false prophets preach Arminianism. It is a message that is not the power of God unto salvation, but is another gospel that leads to damnation. If it's that important why are there not theologians writing about the dangers of Arminianism? That is not a very popular thing to do. Many reformed Calvinistic theologians and preachers want to count their time spent in Arminianism as counting for something. Men are afraid to repent of their false religion that blasphemes the Lord. They honor their own reputation higher than the character of God. Hey, why don't you write a book on Arminianism being a false gospel? You have to admit it is something greatly needed right now. Actually I'm working on that. It will take a couple years to get it together. Expect it out in 2012.